After seeing these photos, I bet you will question every single photograph taken from here on out and wonder if there's an unsettling story behind it. I'm your host Andrew and today I present the top 10 normal looking pictures with terrifying backstories. This one's a good one, so stay tuned. At a number 10 spot, we have the Omog bombing. The Omog bombing was a horrific act of violence that occurred in the Northern Irish town of Omog on August 15th, 1998. This photograph you see here was taken just before the tragic bombing. Shortly after the photo was taken, a bomb exploded in the red car next to the boy being held on his father's shoulder. Incredibly, both the father and the child survived. But unfortunately, the photographer and 28 others lost their lives from the bomb and furthermore, 220 people were injured. The bombing was carried out by the Real Irish Republican Army, the Real IRA, which is a group that opposed the IRA ceasefire and the Good Friday Agreement. The bombing sparked outrage both locally and internationally and dealt a severe blow to the dissident Irish Republican campaign. The victims of the attack include people from a variety of backgrounds and ages, including Protestants, Catholics, teenagers, children, and even tourists. Despite the fact that intelligent agencies had information that could have prevented the attack, the information was not shared with the local police, leading to criticisms of their handling of the case and just a really huge facepalm indeed. In 2009, the victim's families won a civil lawsuit against the four defendants who were found liable for the bombing. However, despite several trials, no one was ever convicted of the attack. At a number 9 spot, we have the Menendez brothers. At first glance, this may just look like a basketball card of Mark Jackson. And it is. But did you notice anything odd about this? Take a look. Nothing? Well, look to the left side. These two men are the Menendez brothers. For those who don't know, this photo was taken days after the brothers had murdered their parents. So we have Mark Jackson and two guys who murdered their parents. What a great card. Not really. The Menendez brothers trial was a highly publicized and a dramatic legal case in the United States. The brothers were accused of killing their wealthy parents and the trial centered around these two conflicting explanations for the murders. The defense argued that the brothers acted out of fear for their lives and claiming that their father had subjected them to years of abuse and if you watch the videos of the brothers explaining this, it's pretty disturbing. So be warned if you do decide to watch. On the other end, the prosecution argued that they committed the murders for financial gain with the intention of inheriting their father's substantial estates. The first trial resulted in a mistrial because both juries were deadlocked, but in the second trial, the brothers were tried together and were found guilty by a single jury. As a result, they were both sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And now this Mark Jackson playing card will forever be known for something other than basketball. Number 8, Columbine School Shooting. Looks like a regular school photo, right? Well, this was taken in 1999 at Columbine High School. And if that name sounds familiar, you should know where this is going. These guys that are seen pretending to hold up a gun are actually the ones who committed one of the worst school shootings in history. On April 20th, 1999, two 12th graders, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, carried out the attack, killing 12 students and a teacher, and injuring 21 others before taking their own lives. This tragedy shook the nation to its core and sparked a nationwide debate about gun control, school security, and the cultural influences that may have contributed to the shooter's motivations. The Columbine Massacre was planned over a year by Harris and Klebold, who both had a fascination with guns and explosives. They had hoped to cause widespread devastation and kill as many people as possible. To do this, they also implanted homemade bombs in the school, however, they failed to detonate, leading to the shooting right after it. The attack was carried out with cold efficiency and lasted for over an hour before the shooters took their own lives in the school library. The police response to the incident was heavily criticized, with law enforcement officials being accused of being too slow to intervene and of not responding appropriately to the situation. And unfortunately, this stuff keeps happening today, so it seems like we have learned nothing from this. At our number 7 spot, we have the worst party ever. This photo looks like a regular early 2000s party picture you would take with the boys, but this isn't the case for this one. This photo captures a moment of horror and tragedy frozen in time. The man with the orange cup, Tyler Hadley, had committed a horrific crime just hours before. He had murdered his parents, Blake and Mary Jo Hadley, with a clawed hammer while high on ecstasy. The bodies of his parents were hidden upstairs, wrapped in towels and covered in belongings, while the party raged on below. Tyler had a history of threatening to kill his parents and was known to see with anger whenever they punished him or showed parental authority. Despite this, no one expected him to actually follow through with his threats. But on the day of the murders, he promised the ultimate party, inviting guests via a message on his Facebook page. At the party, he began bragging about his crime and guests who heard it quickly left or just thought he was lying. 
But for those who stayed, the reality of what just happened became all too clear. One of the guests, Michael Mandel, was even shown the bodies. Despite this, the party still raged on, with the two young men posing for the infamous photo that would later become evidence in Tyler's trial. Eventually, the word of the crime spread and Tyler was arrested the morning after the party. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and the Hadley house was later demolished. This photo remains a haunting reminder of the horrors that can lurk behind closed doors and the dangers of drugs, anger, and a distorted sense of reality. Number six, the Dutch girls of Panama. Two young Dutch travelers, Chris Kremers and Lisanne Froude, set out on a hiking adventure in Panama on April 1st, embarking on the challenging El Pianista Trail. The parents of the girls who were used to receiving daily texts from the daughters became worried when they did not hear from them on April 2nd. On April 6th, the parents along with the police arrived in Panama to search for the missing girls. Despite a comprehensive 10 day search of the forest, no trace of them was found. It wasn't until 10 weeks later that a major breakthrough was made in the case. A local woman handed in a blue backpack belonging to Froon, which contained personal items such as a camera and their phones. The phone showed evidence of emergency numbers being dialed, but due to the lack of reception, the calls did not go through. Froon's phone died on April 4th, and Kremer's phone was turned on intermittently between the 5th and 11th, but the pin was entered incorrectly each time. The discovery of the backpack was only the beginning of the mystery. On the camera were 90 flash photos taken before 1 and 4 in the morning, deep within the jungle and in complete darkness. One of the images showed the back of Kremer's head with blood in her hair. Two months after the backpack was discovered, human remains were found and later confirmed to belong to the two girls through DNA testing. To this day, what really happened to Chris Kremer's and Lisan Froon remains a mystery, with speculations ranging from a tragic accident to even foul play. Despite extensive investigations, no clear answers have been found, leaving their families and and loved ones searching for closure. In the hub of our list, we have Tina Watson. In a tranquil blue lagoon surrounded by the vibrant coral reefs of the Queensland coast, two scuba divers smile for a photo as they make their way down to the ocean floor. Behind them, a still figure lies in the sand, a testament to the dangers that lurk beneath the surface of even the most serene waters. However, this was the last known photo of Tina Watson, a young woman who had journeyed to the Queensland with her husband Gabe for what was supposed to be a romantic honeymoon. Tina and Gabe were eager to explore the sunken shipwreck of the SS Yongala, a popular dive site known for its challenging currents and breathtaking underwater scenery. Despite being unqualified for the dive, they declined the offer of a guided tour and set out on their own. However, things quickly took a turn for the worse as Tina became entangled in the ropes and sunk to the ocean floor. Gabe claimed to have tried to save her, but his statements were later called into question when it was later revealed that he had asked Tina to increase her life insurance policy and named him as a sole beneficiary before their marriage. Foul play was suspected, and Gabe was eventually charged with manslaughter in Queensland. However, the charges were later dismissed, and he was instead charged in his home country of the United States with planning the murder. Tina's death remains a haunting reminder of the unpredictable dangers of the deep sea and the length some will go in the pursuit of money. Number four, Jolie Kalan. On a beautiful sunny day, 18 year old Jolie Kalan stands at the edge of a cliff, taking in the breathtaking view below. Dressed in an oversized red shirt, she gazes over the rolling hills and lush forests of the Pinholda Trail in Chaha State Park, Alabama. She had hiked to this scenic location with her ex boyfriend, 20 year old Lauren Bunner, who stood just a few feet behind her. But as Jolie posed for a photo capturing the stunning beauty of the landscape, little did she know that her life was about to be tragically cut short. In a moment of unspeakable violence, Lauren would raise a 22 caliber revolver and shoot Jolie in the head twice before throwing her body off cliffside into the deep ravine below. Jolie and Lauren had been dating for 10 months, but the relationship was very troubled. Jolie had broken up with Lauren because of his controlling behavior and his refusal to allow her to meet with her friends. Despite the breakup, they continued to keep in regular contact and even shared a dog together. But on that fateful day, Lauren invited Jolie on a hike with the intention of taking her life. After the murder, Lauren called the police and turned himself in, confessing to the brutal crime. He was sentenced to 52 years in prison for the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Number three, a sword attack. On October 22nd, 2015, a horrifying scene took place at the Kronan School in Trollhaden, Sweden. A young man named Antoine Peterson, dressed in a World War II German helmet and a Darth Vader mask, he entered the school with a sword in his hand as well. He targeted two students and a teacher immediately, leaving a trail of bloodshed and a tragedy behind him. The first victim was a 20 year old TA named Levin Eskondar, and he was attacked with the sword and died on the spot. The second student, 15 year old Amin Hassan, was stabbed in the abdomen and later passed away in the hospital. Peterson also killed 42 year old teacher Nazir Amso, 
who had asked him to remove his mask. Incredibly, before the violence erupted, two students even posed for a photograph with Peterson, thinking he was part of a Halloween prank. When the police arrived, they shot Peterson, who later died from his injuries. The motive behind the attacks remains unknown, but Peterson is said to have shouted, I am your father, before attacking his victims. Number two, moments before disaster. The tragedy of the Beirut explosion on August 4, 2020 will go down in history as one of the most devastating and powerful non-nuclear explosions of all time. The explosion caused by the improper storage of ammonia nitrate at the port of Beirut resulted in 181 deaths and thousands of injuries and left 300,000 people homeless. The impact of the explosion was felt as far as Cyprus, Turkey, Syria, and Israel and caused billions of dollars and damages. In the aftermath of the disaster, a picture was discovered on a photographer's recovered phone. The photograph captures a moment of heroism and bravery as a unit of 10 firefighters tried to break into a warehouse to put out a fire. Unfortunately, the explosion occurred moments later and all 10 firefighters were swallowed up by the blast. Number one, a dating game. Rodney James Alcala, also known as the dating game killer, was a notorious serial killer who appeared on the popular TV show, The Dating Game in the 1970s. And this was a photo of him taking on the show. Despite his quote unquote charming exterior, Alcala was a cold blooded killer who was responsible for the deaths of at least seven women, although the exact number of victims remained unknown. He would strangle his victims to unconsciousness, revive them, and then repeat the process until they eventually died. The scary part about this was that at the time of his appearance in the dating game, Alcala was in the midst of his killing spree, and his dark and sinister nature was not yet known to the public yet. He appeared as a successful photographer and was even able to win a date with bachelorette Cheryl Broadshaw, but she ultimately rejected him, calling him very creepy. Some speculate that this rejection may have fueled his later killings. Despite his brutal crimes, Rodney Alcala was able to evade justice for many years, but eventually he was caught, convicted, and sentenced to death for his crimes. To this day, he remains one of the most notorious serial killers in American history, and his appearance on The Dating Game is now a chilling reminder of how easily evil can hide behind a mask of normalcy. Well, these are the top 10 normal looking pictures with terrifying backstories. What'd you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and be sure to give some recommendations for some future videos. We would like to know. I'm your host, Andrew, and I hope you guys have a scary day.